Shout out to Boss J who encouraged me to do this sequel. And he contributed too. So if you've mastered the first five tips, here's five more to help you get even better. Good practice number six is to set expectations. The people around you may be well aware that you are working from a specific time, but the implications of that may not be as clear to them. Some good reminders would be to stay quiet, keep the kids or the pets busy, and to give way with internet activities. Good practice number seven is to engage regularly. When you don't see someone face to face, a simple hi or hello goes a very long way. If you really want to have fun with it, there's an app called Bitmoji where you create a virtual you. It starts by asking you to take a selfie and you guys would not believe how accurate this is. So for me, I had to polish up a few features. I don't like my beard the way it was captured. And of course, it's time to pick an outfit. They have quite a comprehensive collection, but I would like to stay true to what I wear on a typical work from home setting. Hmm, sounds like this is an accurate shot. There you are. And then you could incorporate this bitmoji into your keyboard by following the prompts. And the next time that you are about to chat someone, there is a special icon that looks like a globe, which if you click on it, it would activate all the bitmoji examples. And you simply type a keyword to pull up the bitmoji of your choice. And this is what it looks like. So the whole world is your oyster. Good practice number eight, no phones. Mm-hmm. The only time you should be accessing your phones is during break time and lunch time. Remember, we should set up alarms for break and lunch time. We physically move away from our station when it starts and we go back to it when it ends. As simple as that. In between, go ahead, share that post, like that comment, subscribe to that channel. I would also recommend downloading the communication platforms to your work computer. Not only would this maximize their functionalities, it would also keep you from being distracted by everything else on your phone should you decide to download the mobile versions. Good practice number nine is take responsibility. Sure, our colleagues are always there to help us. But if you will be given a task specifically for you, you should be the one leading the way. Whenever you're given a task, it means you're being trusted. And in order to maintain that trust, we should provide timely updates to everyone involved from start to finish. And finally, good practice number 10 is to collaborate. Teamwork divides the task and multiplies the success. The higher you are in the corporate ladder, the more departments you have to work very closely with. Include them in your meeting invites. Talk to them. I just find that an actual conversation is way more effective than an email reminder when it comes to making sure that your requests are completed. Let's have a review. The five tips discussed in this video are set expectations, engage regularly, no phones, take responsibility, and collaborate. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you're always updated whenever I upload new content. Thanks for watching and have a great day.